In this video, we'll look at how we can determine the version of Java used to compile the class. In an earlier video in this series, we looked at the error unsupported major minor version. As we discovered in that video, the error means that you're attempting to run a class that was compiled with a newer version of Java than the one you're using to execute the code. Let's say, for example, that you've compiled your code using Java SE 11. The version of the compiler is stored in the class file, something we'll look at in just a moment. If you try to run your code with Java SE 8 runtime, the unsupported class version error will be thrown, indicating the incompatibility was detected. Class files contain Java bytecode, and this bytecode is executed by the Java Virtual Machine, or JVM. There are 10 sections in a Java class file structure. The section we are interested in is called the version of class file format. It's two bytes long and located starting at byte offset 6. This is where we find the bytes that represent the version of the compiler used to create the class. So let's say that we have a class file. How can we extract the information and use it to determine the version of Java used to compile our class? Let's take a look at some code. First, we'll do this operation in a Windows environment, and then we'll switch to a Linux environment. First, we're here in a Windows 10 environment. Let's zoom in so we can see the command window a little easier. First, we'll run dir. We have a simple hello world Java file and the associated class file. First, let's run the code. We'll type in java-cp dot and then hello world. We need to use the cp or class path option to specify the class path. We get an output message that says hello world as we would expect. So we know the class file works. There are multiple ways to extract the bytes that we're interested in. The first way assumes that we have a JDK installed on the machine. It includes a file called Java P as part of the distribution. Java P is a disassembler that allows us to examine a class file. To run it, we type in Java P, specify the class path again, and add the dash verbose option, which will produce detailed output of the contents of the class file. Then we'll specify the name of the class file we wish to look at, and pipe that information into the find string command, which will search for specified strings. We'll give that command the string major to search for. In the output, we see the string major version 55. Let's look at the Wikipedia page for the Java class file format. We'll zoom into the section on major version numbers. We see that the number 55 corresponds to Java SC 11, which is indeed the version of Java installed on this Windows 10 machine and the version used to compile the class file. This is great, but what if you only have the JRE installed on your Windows machine and you can't install the JDK and thus have no access to the Java P command? No problem, let's go back to Windows. We'll need to run PowerShell, then the command format dash hex, the name of our class file, and pipe that into more so we stop at the first page of output. Recall that we're interested in the two bytes starting at offset six. In this case, we see the value 37, which is hex, Let's open up the calculator in Windows. Notice we have it set to programmer mode, so we can see the results in hex, decimal, octal, and binary. Let's switch to hex, enter 37, and as we see, our value in decimal is 55. If we scroll back up to our previous result when we ran the Java P command, we see that our result then was indeed 55, which means Java 11 was used. Now let's switch to a Linux environment and run a similar set of commands there. First, we run ls to see that we have both a Java file and a class file. We'll run java-version to see that our current version of Java is 8. If we run java hello world, we get the hello world message, so we know our class file is good. Let's run java p dash verbose, the name of the class file, and pipe that into grep and search for the string major. In our result, we get the decimal number 52. Let's go back to our lookup table and see that 52 decimal corresponds to Java 8. And while we're here, for good measure, notice that 52 decimal is hex 34. So again, let's say that we don't have access to the JDK in Linux. How can we look at the class file and get the version number? There are many ways to do this in Linux, but we'll use the command hex dump. 
We'll specify the option dash C and provide the name of our class file. Then pipe that into head, which will show us the first few lines of the file. Looking at our output, we see Cafe Babe, which is how all class files start, then some zeros and the number 34. We already noted that hex 34 is the same as decimal 52, so we know this corresponds to Java 8. But let's go ahead and look at a way to convert hex to decimal in Linux. Again, there are many ways to do this. We'll use a bash technique and echo dollar double parentheses 16 pound 34, which means we're echoing the number 34 that's specified to be in base 16 form. And the output of that command is 52, the decimal equivalent. So what about application security? Is there anything we should be concerned about when checking the version of Java used to compile a class file? If you run into issues related to incorrect Java version using your local machine, it's probably fine. Perhaps you're running an application you got from somewhere or you've recently upgraded your version of Java. As long as these errors are an expected event, you should be fine. Where the problem comes in is if you experience these issues in a test or production environment. If you experience problems like this in production, it could be an indication that your production environment is not well managed or controlled. Such an environment may not be properly patched and maintained, leaving it vulnerable to compromise. Properly patching and updating your systems is one of the ways to keep your systems as secure as possible, and having a production environment where reliable and predictable deployments are routine is crucial to running a successful organization. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. To get our free ebook on ways to write more secure Java code, go to www.beginsecuretraining.com. When writing code, remember to always begin secure.